Hey you guys, this is Raphael from ShilohRelics.com. Hope you're doing well. Things are good here in Tennessee and I'm glad to be with you guys again today. Uh, I started this one just a few minutes ago and I got about 20 seconds into it and I thought my mind just went blank. Couldn't remember something I've known for years. So evidently the old man's slipping, but I'm gonna start back. Today we're gonna to talk about one of the guns from one of the most important gun makers uh, during the 1800s. The Allen Company in Worcester, Mass. The Allen and Thurber, Allen and Wheelock, uh, and regular Allen, Ethan Allen, made tons of guns during the 1800s. They made a lot of different versions. So if you like collecting different varieties of gun uh, that were made by one gun maker, Allen is your guy, because they made a lot. They made a lot of variations, a lot of sizes, a lot of styles, barrel lengths, this one is one of the big guns that they made. During the Civil War, the early 1860s, uh, they don't have specific dates like a Colt. You can't say, well, this one was made only here, uh, this year. They're just early 1860s. This one is what is known as the Allen and Wheelock. Wheelock? Is that like a slee stack from that old movie? The Allen and Wheelock, <laughs> I almost did it again, Center Hammer Lip Fire Army Revolver. Remember we talked about Army versus Navy, got nothing to do with football. Army is 44 caliber, Navy is 36. So this is the 44 caliber uh, revolver, fire six shots, and they are a lip fire cartridge. Most of the time, these guns show up one of three ways. They show up in percussion, meaning that they use just a regular percussion cap and a regular bullet. They show up with a uh, center uh, uh, that it strikes the rim of the cartridge. And then they have the lip fire. And it sounds just like it is. It hits the lip of the cartridge on the back side of it. Uh, 44 caliber, rare gun. And that's why I'm uh, telling you about this one. They only made about 250 of these guns. And why do they call them center hammer? Their other earlier guns, some of them will have the hammer mounted on the outside of the frame. This one is called a center hammer, and it is literally what they say. It lines up center of the frame. And this gun is pointed this way, but I have checked it thoroughly. It is safe. Always treat a gun. That was a dumb thing for me to do because I always tell y'all to be careful with them. So please be careful. Check the guns. Always treat them, if, even if they're unloaded like they are loaded, because even though they're antiques, they are still weapons. These guns are based on Allen's patent. In 1858, he actually had two of them. He had one on September 7th and November 9th, 1858. And that's what this gun is based off of. You can see their maker's mark. It's got Allen and Wheelock. It's got uh, Worcester Mass. It's got those two patent dates on the side of the frame. Very distinctive guns because they're so dang big. That's a lot of gun when you look at it compared to most everything of the day. But there's one trait about this gun that will stick out above any that you encounter. What it does, uh, once you fire the gun, if the uh, casing gets stuck, how do you get that out of there? What you do, there's a little lever there and it drops the loading gate. And the loading gate, there's two versions of it. See how that hinge is on the bottom? The early version has the hinge on the top and they bring a little bit more money. They're tougher to find. This one has it on the bottom and you can see it here like this. What you do, drop that gate, put it on half cock and you can get the trigger guard, the whole trigger guard moves forward and it works a little rammer and it's hard to get a picture of, but it actually loads up uh, it loads, it unloads that cartridge. It pops that out. And that's what that does. The trigger is right in front of, there's a little lever on the back of the trigger guard itself and that drops down. So it's, it's really neat. It, it wasn't a great design, which is why you don't see many of them, but 250 or so of these uh, that were all that were made have that trait. So, Cool design for the lit fire cartridge. You don't see a lit fire cartridge as much. Cool design on the hammer. Big gun. 
people always like big guns. They always sell better. Uh, the gun has walnut wood grips, two piece wood grips. And one thing about these is the serial numbers. It's important to have matching serial numbers on these. And these will actually show up under the grips. This one's a serial number 141. So it's right in the middle of the production. You'll see the serial numbers under the grips. You'll see it on the loading. Uh, uh, <laughs> you'll see it on the cylinder pin. You'll see it on the cylinder and a couple of other places, but it's important that they all match. And this one is all matching all the way through. Uh, cool gun, seven and a half inch barrel. It's half round, half octagonal. Got the original front side on it. Uh, just, a, just a good solid gun all the way around. They are not specifically marked as military purchase, but in Flaterman's Guide, and, and I always tell you about Norm Flaterman's Guide, get you a copy of it. it it's the best 40 or $50 you will spend if you're going to buy any Civil War gun. Uh, he mentions in there that they're not specifically military marked, but people collect them as a martial, meaning military gun. So they sell as a military gun because a lot of them were used. Wasn't but 250, so don't wait for one to get marked because it's not going to be right if it's marked. Today, um, I want you, I had somebody reach out the other day and uh, I would never betray a trust of somebody that, that asked for help. But I had somebody the other day that asked for help. He said, uh, sometimes the weight of the world just gets to be too much on you. And I get that. I've, I have, uh, and the reason I tell you this is because the last email that he sent me, he said, it's nice to know that other people are, have gone through or are going through the same thing that I've been through. I've struggled with depression all my life and I've been the funny clown to try to make up for it. I've, I've found that humor with me helps me get through things. And if I hadn't been able to laugh a lot of the times where things got bad, I wouldn't be here. Uh, so, I, and I say this, I want, if you're out there and you're struggling, know you're not alone and know that uh, there's no shame in it. It's, it's everybody has highs and lows and people with depression, sometimes those lows just feel a little bit lower than it feels like it ought to feel. But uh, there are places, uh, God forbid you ever get to that point, there are a, the suicide helplines. And, and I told him, I said, man, I want to help. I would do anything I could to help anybody if, if they're suffering that way. And I said, but I'm not trained in it and I don't know what to do. And it's a helpless feeling. But I, I, I went on and I researched it and there is a national suicide helpline. And here's the website. There's the phone number. And like I told him, ain't no shame in asking for help. Because if, if, if a simple phone call could help you hang on one more day and see that life can be better, life that life is precious. And I hold firm to believing that we can make everything better, but only if we're still here. And because I really feel like these have helped some people. And if I, when I was at that lowest and I was there, if I'd have took that step the wrong direction, I might not have been there to tell you guys that I love you today. And uh, I'm thankful. God, and you hear me say it all the time, but it's no lie. I'm thankful to be here. I've, I've got beautiful children. Uh, we're just a normal family. They love me sometimes. Sometimes they can't stand me. But that I think that every day of their life that they know that I love them and that I would do anything for them. And I'm proud to be here. If you need help, don't hesitate to get help. I will I would do whatever I can do, but I'm not trained in any of that stuff. I'm just a simple country boy that don't want to see any bad thing come to anybody. And if you've heard me say it a hundred times, the last words you hear out of my mouth are I love you, I'm okay with that. I love you guys and I'll catch you next time.